Hello guys, we will come back in this video. We will be discussing the physical features of India. The dogs are barking very loudly, so uh, you know, let's you know, we are getting energy, right? Let's do it quickly. They are energetic, we are also energetic. Yes, let's go. So, India is a large landmass formed during the geological period which has influenced her relief. Okay, now besides the geological formations, see, okay, yes, uh, India's large landmass formed during the different geological period which has influenced her reliefs. Besides the geological formation, a number of processes such as weathering, erosion, and deposition have created and modified the relief to its present form, right? Now, see, basically, how have if you see the India, India has all kinds of physical features, right? From the mountains, plains, peninsular plateau, desert, coastal plain. What is the reason for formation of these things all at the same land mass? Because if you see the land like uh, Saudi Arabia, it is largely desert, right? So, you know, India has experienced many kind of, you know, geologically. It's not a very recent country. Right, so if if we see twenty two point five crore years ago, sadhe bais crore, twenty five point five crore years ago, India was part of the Gondwana land. If by the term Gondwana land, I mean, you know, the area like uh, South America, African plate, the Indian plate, the Australia, they were all at the same place. After uh, you know 22.5 crores they started separating due because of the convection current and uh, you know India started moving northward and they hit the the uh, Eurasian plate uh, by the way uh, the the Pangaea was divided into two parts uh, the upper part was known as Angara land oblique Laurasia which consisted of Asia uh, except India which consisted of the Europe except you know the Balkan the Balkan plateau the Italy right and North America so three continents up and roughly three continents along with India down so due to convection current India started you know drifting up towards the north and it hit the the Laurasia or the Eurasia and when it hit the Tethys Sea, the sediments of Tethys Sea started crumbling and it started, you know, rising up. This is the reason why sedimentary features, sedimentary rocks and marine deposits and marine fossils are found in the Himalayas, right? So, the same thing is written here, okay? Uh, the oldest landmass was a part of the Gondwana land, blah blah blah, right? That is, it was folded to form the mountain system, okay? The Himalayan uplift out of the Red Sea and subsidence on the northern flank of the peninsula resulted in the formation of large basin, right? Yes, very important. Uh, if you see the present, so that is how we have discussed Himalayas. Now, if we come to uh, the plains, the plains have formed because when it hit, when Indian northern flank hit, it got subsided, right? And after millions of years, this subsided depression was filled up constantly by the mountains uh, whose rivers deposited its, you know, silt, alluvium, forming the northern plain. If you see the, uh, uh, the dimension of northern plain, it's roughly the same size, same length as that of the Himalayas, around 2400 kilometers, and the width is around, you know, 280 to 320 kilometers in width, right? Uh, so that was about the northern plains. Now, if we see the peninsular plateau, peninsular plateau is mainly composed of the igneous and uh, metamorphic rock, right? Now, let's see the major physiographic divisions are the Himalayan mountains, the northern plains, the peninsular plateau, the Indian desert, the coastal plain, and the islands. The Himalayan mountains, the geologically young and structurally fold mountains, stretch over. Okay, so two points. These are geologically very young and these are structurally fold mountains. They are They don't have... By the term fold mountain, we mean they have been formed because of the folding, right? So you will find lots of thrusts, thrust faults in these, uh, the Himalayan 
uh, mountains right now these mountains range in the west and uh, west west east direction it starts from indus right so this is indus river where himalayas are starts and it ends in the brahmaputra right the himalayas represent the loftiest and one of the most rugged mountain barriers in the world right as we have discussed here yes a very important point that here it's very broad roughly 400 km but as we go towards the arunachal pradesh it's not very broad only 150 km in width right the attitudinal variation are greater in eastern himalayas than in western himalayas right very important that is uh, even if the two mountains are in the same range there will there is lots of attitudinal variation one is 6k another is 8k then next is 1.5k that is not seen in the east that is that is seen in eastern himalaya right and uh, there are number of valleys lying in between the ranges the northern most range is known as the himadri roughly 6000 kilometers and if you see the fold of the great himalayas are asymmetric in nature the core of this part is granite very important uh, the himalayas if you see how how can himalayas go so top there must be some force which is pushing it and definitely this is the you know granite the himadris have the granite base but not the uh, other ranges right because if you see uh, other ranges like himachal himachal have highly compressed rock shivalik have unconsolidated sediments further next if we move to himachal himachal are the most rugged roughly 3.7 to 4.5 thousand meters composed of highly compressed rocks peer panjal peer panjal range forms the longest and most important range Dhauladhar and Mahabharat range are also the important ones. The range, this range consists of famous valleys such as Kashmir, Kangada, Kullu Valley, right in Himachal Pradesh. The region is well known for its hill stations, right. The outermost range of the Himalayas is called the Shivaliks, right, roughly width of 10 to 50 kilometers. They have an altitude range of 0.9 to 1.1 k, right. Uh, unconsolidated sediments, longitudinal valleys in between. In him, yes, the longitudinal valleys between the second uh, uh, range of Himalayas and the third range of Himalayas, the longitudinal valleys are known as the dunes, right? Some of the important dunes are like the Dehradun, the Dehradun, Patli Dun, Kotli Dun, right? These are very important dunes. Besides the longitudinal division, the Himalayas have been divided into the basins on uh, regions from west to east. Right. So from Indus to Satlaj, we have Punjab Himalayas. From Satlaj to Kali, we have Kumau Himalayas. From Kali to Tista, we have Nepal Himalayas. And from Tista to Dihang, we have Assam Himalayas. And from Dihang, uh, the Himalayas take, uh, as, as the Brahmaputra take the U-turn, the Himalayas also take a very sharp turn. Right, and these are known as the Purvanchal Hills, extension of Himalayas. So important hills are like Patkai Hills, Naga Hills, Manipur Hills, and the Mizo Hills. Okay, the Brahmaputra marks the eastern, as we say. Next, we move to the northern plains. The northern plains has been formed by the interplay of three important rivers: the Indus, Ganga, and Brahmaputra. This plain is formed of alluvial soil. The deposition of alluvium in the past in the vast basin lying at the foothills of the Himalayas over millions of years formed of this fertile plain spreads over an area of 7 lakh square kilometer. The plain being about 2400 kilometer long and 240 kilometer broad is densely populated physiographic division. Right. So as I told uh, the first of all it is formed of alluvial soil. Okay. By the action of three rivers, Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra and see the extent of area. India has in roughly an area of 3.29 million square kilometers. That would equal to like 32 lakh square kilometers. Right. So out of 32, 7 lakh square kilometers have been you know, constitutes, constituted by northern plains. 
the plane being about 2400 km long into 40 to 320 km round is a densely populated physiographic division with a rich soil cover combined with adequate water supply and favorable climate it is a agriculture a very productive part of india both in terms of you know plants as well as in terms of people because uh, plains as i've already told and climate these are since both are favorable in the northern plains and hence it is very very densely populated region of india right now majoli is the largest inhabitant river in ireland it is an important do you know the rivers in the lower course split into numerous channels due to deposition of the silt yes this is what happens in uh, you know the the bengal region and the and the bangladesh region right uh, the northern plain is broadly divided into three section yes northern plain is broadly in the western part the punjab plain right the punjab plain between uh, the indus so the punjab plain between the indus and gagar between gagar and tista we have the ganga plain and between tista and brahmaputra we have the brahmaputra plain right a very important thing is that the large part of the plain lies in pakistan right of punjab plain and the indus and its tributaries like the jhelum the chenab the ravi bias and satluj originate in himalayas the section of the plains is dominated by dwabs dwabs made up of the two words do means two and ab means water right similarly punjab is made up of panj means five and ab means water okay now we'll see some important dwabs so what you see here is you know the sind sagar dwab between indus and jhelum Uh, let's start from the bottom. So, Sabr. Okay. So uh, between Satluj and Bias, we have Bisht. Between Bias and Ravi, we have Bari. Between Ravi and Chena, we have Rachna. And between Chena and Jhelum, we have Jitch. Jitch Dwab. And between Jhelum and Indus, we have Sind Sagar Dwab. Right. so that was the interesting part of the doabs so next is we move to the ganga plain extend between the gaggar and the tista river right the northern plain generally described as flat land with no variation in its relief it is uh, not true the vast plains also have diverse relief features according to the variations in the relief features the northern plains can be divided into four regions right Yes, the river after descending from the mountain deposit pebbles in narrow belt of about eight to sixteen kilometers in the width, lying parallel between the slopes of the Shiva lakes. It is known as Babar, right? The word. The the reason why it is known as Babar is because of there is a grass uh, which grows in these you know kankar or big boulders known as Babar, right? Now after Babar we. Uh, you know the river disappears in this region after babbar we have uh, uh, the stream reemerge and create a wet swampy and marshy region known as terai you know tarta terai this was thickly forested region of the wild land the forests have been cleared to create uh, agricultural land to settle the migrants from the pakistan after partitions locate and yes dudwa national park is in here okay the largest part of the northern plain is formed of older alluvium they lie above the flooded plains of the river and present you know terrace like features yes are known as the largest part of northern plains you have to remember this they are formed of older alluvium this part is known as bhangad right and the soil in this region contains calcareous deposit known as kankad okay the newer and the younger deposit of flood plains are known as khaddar right they are renewed almost every year and so are fertile thus ideal for intensive agriculture so if we find this babbar and khadar on you know uh, google we'll see this is himalayas and this is you know the babbar region of that is big boulders where rivers first of all this is cross sectional view of the river so a river coming down it disappears it reemerges in terai which is you know uh, some of the important forest region it's a marshy region and has you know important for uh, national parks like dudwa national park right 
uh, having rhinoceros, having tigers, lions once upon a time but now uh, you know extinct from those regions. After that if you see the Bhangar which covers the most part of the northern plains actually the river was flowing once upon a time along the, the banks right and it had you know uh, but with course of time, the river, uh, you know, scutted the uh, cut. Excuse me, cut the land further deeper, and this is now the river, and it has deposited, you know, its deposits here on the Khadar, right? So the new deposits are Khadar. Again, Khadar after some time will become Bhangar, right? And new deposits will again be there. So that was about the Babar Terai. Bangar and Khadar, BTBK, right? Next, we move to the Peninsular Plateau. The plen Peninsular Plateau, if you see Peninsular Plateau, the, the Peninsular Plateau has been divided into two parts, right? The first part of the Peninsular Plateau is the Central Highland, and the second part is the Deccan Plateau. If you see Central Highland, uh, you know, the area extends from northwest, it is Aravali, to the south, it is Vindhya, and to the east, you know, it tapers along. So, if you see Central Highland is mainly covers main portion of the Malwa Plateau. Uh, to the east of the Malwa Plateau, we have a region like Bundelkhand, Bagelkhand, and just above the Vindhya Range, as we say, it forms the boundary. Beyond Vindhya Range, we have the Narmada, which divides the Indian Peninsula Plateau between two parts, that is the Central Highland and the uh, Deccan uh, Plateau, right? So, a Chota Nagpur Plateau is the eastern extension of the Central Highland and the, uh, you know, the Rajasthan, the desert, right, is the western extension which is found beyond the Aravli range. So, these are the two uh, important parts of the Central Highland. Apart from that, if we see the rivers, the rivers flow from the southwest to the northeast. Some example of important rivers are like the Son, Betwa. Kane and Chambal, right? So the movement along north east shows the direction of the uh, its its tilt, right? And the next we have you know the Maha the Deccan Plateau. The Deccan Plateau, if we see the extensions are like in the north we have the uh, the you know uh, Satpura Range in the north. It is just beyond the Narmada River. So, Sapura Range, eastern extension is the hills like the Mahadeo Hills, the Maikal Hills, right? From a Satpura Range in the north to the west, we have the Western Ghat, and towards east, we have the Eastern Ghat, right? And uh, there is a proper dif a difference between the Western Ghat and Eastern Ghat, but before that, if you see the general trend of the Eastern uh, of the Deccan Plateau, it towards the east, right? It's tilted towards east. That is why most of the rivers in the Deccan Plateau are uh, eastwards, right? Now, if you see important uh, ranges, we the Eastern Ghats. It starts from the Mahanadi and it ends up till the Nilgiri. The Western Ghat is more continuous. The Eastern Ghat is, you know, not so continuous. It is discontinuous owing to the fact that Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, by continuous deposition, have made, you know, the Eastern Ghats break away, discontinuous. Western Ghats highest peak include the the Anamalai Hills, which are roughly two point seven kilometers. Other important uh, highest peak is Doda Beta, which is roughly two point six kilometers. Right. The Western Ghats have important passes like Thalgat, Borghat, and Palghat. Let's see on the map. So here in Maharashtra, we see the Borghat, right? Let's see Thalgat. So this this map shows uh, clearly. So Thalgat is on the top, then is Borghat, then is Palgat, right? 
so tbp are some of the important passes of the the western ghat thargat thargat is very near to the gujarat the borghat is very near to the karnataka and palghat is you know it's in kerala right if you see um, you know important uh, uh, you know uh, height of uh, highest peak in eastern ghat mahendragiri mahendragiri is the highest peak in the eastern ghat and it is in the odisha it is roughly 1.5 kilometers right so in other important hills include shevaroy hill jawadi hill which are located in the southeast of the eastern ghat and important hill stations the udgamandalam which is also known as uti and kodai canal let's see on these things on map so the kodai canal kodai canal is uh, on the western ghats right uh, in the anamalai hill range so it is on the eastern flank of the western ghat in the tamil nadu region and uh, it is locally known as little israel also by the by the term kodai canal it means the gift of the forest in tamil language canal is forest in tamil language right uh, and uh, Let let's see one on the map. So you know here are the eastern ghats and this is Kodai Canal. On if you see the yes. So this is Kerala border and it is on the eastern half, eastern side of the western ghat, right? Yeah, so Uti is on the further north, right? It is also known as Udaga, Udaga Mandalam, Udaga Mandalam. So the local language was Utkal, right? Utkal means the single stone. So from that, the name Uti came, Udaga Udaga Mandalam, Udaga Mandalam. It is towards the Nilgiri Hills, and you know the second, yeah, that is Kodai Canal. It's towards the Kodai Canal is towards the Anamalai range. A very important fact that uh, the distinct feature of Peninsular Plateau is the black soil area known as the Deccan Trap. Very important. The distinct feature of the Peninsular Plateau is the black soil area known as the Deccan Trap. This is a volcanic origin here, and the rocks are igneous. Actually, these rocks have denuded over time and are responsible for formation of black soil. The Ravalli Hills lie on the western and the northwestern margin of the Peninsular Plateau. These are hills, eroded hills, and formed broken hills. Right. So that was like very, very, very important fact that. Uh, I was about to go, go. I was about to miss. Is that uh, the the peninsular plateau, right? The central highland has its extension up till the Chota Nagpur plateau, and beyond that, the peninsular plateau or the Deccan, uh, you know, uh, peninsula. Its extension. is in the meghalaya its extension is the karbi anglong its extension is you know regions like uh, the north kachar right by the way the karbi anglong is the northern i mean the dis- the district north of north kachar in assam right so these are extension of these are extension of deccan plateau not the central highland right and the meghalaya the garo khasi jantia starting from left to right is separated from chota nagpur plateau by uh, a fault right 
so important difference between the central highland and deccan plateau the another important difference is the black soil is found in deccan plateau the central highland doesn't have that black soil and this is due to the fact that and this black soil region is also known as the deccan trap right next we have the indian desert right if you see the indian desert you know the it's western margin it's eastern margin excuse me yes eastern margin of the desert is the aravalli hills the rains is less than 150 mm a year right and uh, it has arid climate low vegetation cover uh yes very important fact that there are two kinds of dunes here one is barchan Bar- dune which are like uh, crescent shaped dunes right and second is the longitudinal dune dunes right let's see barchan dune so now what we see here are the barchan dunes right uh, so you know the so wind these forms transfer to the wind direction so this what you see is the crescent chain this is also found in mars so this region are known is is the windward side and a complete drastic fall is the leeward side now next is the longitudinal dunes when the winds are not you know uh, straight they are concentric so we have the longitudinal dunes and finally we have star dune when the wind is concentric right longitudinal wind when the wind is not right so this is barchan dune right next is these are the linear dunes or longitudinal dunes right so see the wind direction next is transfer dunes right and finally we have the star dunes right so these are the star dunes here formed next are the coastal plain you know the 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 coastal plain these are formed because of the rivers which uh, have eroded the western ghats and the eastern ghats respectively forming western coastal plain and the eastern coastal plain the western coastal plains can be divided into three parts so konkan kannad and the malabar mainly malabar of you know the kerala the kannad basically of the karnataka and the konkan case mainly of the goa and maharashtra next towards east we have the northern sirkars right the northern sirkars uh, you know roughly starting uh, in regions of like on northern andhra pradesh and uh, odisha we have northern sirkar and in uh, you know regions of tamil nadu and andhra pradesh we have uh, koromandal coast important facts is that the chilka lake is the largest salt water lake in india it lies in the state of odisha to the south of mahanadi delta right next is the islands the lakshadweep island group lying close to the malabar coast of yeah important the lakshadweep island is coral island the andaman and nicobar island are the elevated portion of the submarine mountains right important fact is that lakshadweep these corals if we see basically they are made of the coral polyps let's see on the but that's not always the case in fact this coral here helia fungia is the world's largest coral polyp and it essentially is a single polyp which is really one of those that has chosen to live a largely solitary existence but there's one other really interesting thing about this species and that is that it has tiny symbiotic shrimp involved in its tissues so this is a symbiosis upon a symbiosis you've got the algae feeding the coral and then a relationship between the coral and the little tiny shrimp and that's pretty typical of what you see on a coral reef lots of cooperation between species it's the eye Mm. Even the corals themselves are alive. They're made up of tiny animals called coral polyps. 
distant cousins of jellyfish. Mm -hmm. Hundreds, even thousands of polyps can make up a coral. And this impressive reef, they built it, millimeter by millimeter. How? A polyp is mostly stomach, with a mouth on top. It sits in a hard skeleton that's part of the reef. The polyp takes in dissolved minerals from the water and mixes them with proteins. Then it rises up out of its skeleton, leaving space below. It deposits calcium carbonate, also known as limestone, into this space. Over time, each little polyp not only builds its own skeleton, but adds to the structure of the reef. So what gives the polyp the energy for all this building? A unique partnership. Inside most reef building polyps are tiny algae called zooxanthellae. They use energy from the sun to photosynthesize, producing up to 95% of the food the corals need. As animals, the corals emit nutrients valuable to the algae too, and also give them a protected place in which to live. This trade-off benefits both the algae and the corals. It's called a symbiotic relationship. The algae are even responsible for the colors we identify with corals. Right? So, you know, it starts, so we are quite clear with how the coral polyps form, right? So, important condition is that since they require sunlight, the zooxanthellae they require sunlight, hence they must be shallow water, temperature must be 18 to 13 degrees Celsius, hence they are best found in tropical and subtropical region. Less turbidity because if more uh, uh, you know, sediment enters there, it, 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 it's problematic for them, hence they are not found in the mouth of the river, right? So, we, if, if we see, uh, it starts from the fringes of the coast or fringes of a mountain, the coral reefs, uh, because it has to shallow, it needs shallow water. Uh, I mean, yeah, and hence, uh, it can't start, start deep in the ocean. So, oh, it starts with fringing reefs. Right. For example, in Andaman and Nicobar Island, we find fringing reefs. Then it moves to barrier reefs. Uh, uh, barrier reefs. Uh, when uh, because the mountain in the middle, it starts to subside. And for example, the Great Barrier Reef. Right. Uh, also, because of the cross vertical growth of corals, but they cannot cross the water. Right. And finally, when the middle mountain it subsides a whole a lot. Example regions like Maldives, right? You will find lots of atolls there, and Lakshadweep. So from fringing reef to barrier reef to atoll, we find these corals, right? So these are three kinds of reefs. Uh, so we got to know about the coral reefs. Next is you know the Pitti Island in a bird is a bird century is in Lakshadweep and the India's only active volcano that is the Barren Island is in Andaman and Nicobar right so in that sense we complete the physical features of India thank you